<laughs> uh oh. Hello, 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 and welcome to another edition of Sports in the Mix with the crew. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to talk some sports. I got my man all the way from Tyler, Texas, Kevin oh. Simon. What's up, man? Man, I'm out of the closet in the basement. I'm in a new room. I'm feeling good. Time to talk sports. <laughs> I know that's right. Well, this man <laughs> right here, let me tell you something. I thought that Joe Namath had done got in the text business now because this uh. man, Dre Russell, <laughs> guaranteed a win for the Clippers. Did you see that, to Kevin? Yeah, you said it to me. I, he, yeah, he, he stuck his neck out there, and that was, you know, it turned out he was right. Dre doesn't miss off. Dre is in that. the house. He told us what was going to happen to the Lakers, and now he is representing the Los Angeles Clippers. Do you know why he's representing them, folks? Because they're the last team in L.A. that's still standing. Yeah. They're the last team, brother. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 team. I said they were the best team in L.A. Now, it took them a while, but they finally got through it. But but I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Let me let me just tell you this: How good Kawhi Leonard is. This dude, when he said in Game Six, I I knew Dallas was gonna lose that game. I'm just gonna be honest. I said if Kawhi start getting heating up and start doing his thing, it's over. And he looked at you because you know he had to put his headsets on. He just couldn't sit still and mm -hmm. instead of doing his deal on the interviews. Uh, I didn't want to go home tonight. You know, I don't right. want to go home tonight. But I will say this. And then, and then, Dre, I'm going to let it turn it over to you. Kudos go out to Tyrone Lou. He made adjustments. He sat down Beverly, which he should have. Mm -hmm. The management, I think Steve Baum up there saying, what's this fool doing? You know, <laughs> trying to start a fight. We, we don't play ball like that. And they went with the man kid from Florida State. Dre, mm -hmm. you are on the microphone. Let me tell you something, fellas. Uh, Teron Lou woke up in just in time because that lineup he started out with, with Patrick Beverly, and, and it's obvious that stuff hadn't been working. But, man, was he stubborn on making the change. But once he made the change, the Clippers looked really good the last couple of games against Dallas after, after really getting in a hole. Dallas let him off the hook, man. When Dallas went big, when Rick Carlisle went big, I think it was game five or four or five. And game they four. I didn't realize how big the Mavs team was when they want to play these guys. They've been sitting them on the bench. So when they went big, it caught the Clippers off guard, man. And, and Dallas has the biggest team. I hadn't seen a team this big in a long time. I mean, Porzingis, Marjanovic, Doncic, Klub, Kleber, Powell, mm. Willie Carly stein They got a lot of big boys. And once they started using them, they were beating the Clippers. But when they went home for that, that next game and the Clippers went, you know, of course, we know what happened. Each team won in the other team's court. First time it had happened, 3-3, three, three, game seven back here in L.A. I knew the Clippers weren't going to screw up again because they went so small. Teron Lou countered what Carlisle did with Dallas by going tiny. They didn't even play their center, uh, Zubac. Ivaka Zubac only played two minutes in game seven. So they went really small. They played Nick Batoon in the middle. So small men beat, beat big men is kind of what it amounted to. But like you said, Kawhi Leonard, he had beginning to make me look bad because I yeah. said a couple of years ago, he was the best player in the NBA. And I had a lot of people out here saying that thought I was on drugs or something because everybody was saying LeBron James and everybody else. I said Kawhi Leonard was the best player in the NBA. The year Toronto won the championship and I was going to Toronto and seeing those games up close, I'm like, this guy, man. But once again, since he's been here in L.A., he hadn't really performed. But he woke up last week. And I think because of him waking up, I'm picking the Clippers to beat the Utah Jazz in the next okay. round. Okay. All right. All right. It yeah, was well, seven I, years ago when he was with the uh, Spurs and they went mm -hmm. up against the Miami Heat mm -hmm. and they beat LeBron in Miami during that time period. The guy is phenomenal. I've never yep. seen anybody play basketball where he's palming the ball almost yep. all the time. You know, his hands well, are hand, so big. Yeah, his hands are as big as Dr. J's hands. You know, and Dr. Yeah. J was known to have the biggest hands ever. And, yeah, he's got huge hands, man. This guy's hands look like a baseball glove. And it, it, it makes him – he's such a good player when he plays hard, when he's healthy. I think he's one of the top two still, one of the top two or three best all-around players in the NBA today. I think yeah. he is. Well, let's, let's talk about Dallas, man, because, you know, even after the game, every last one of the Clippers went up to Luka Doncic. You saw uh, uh, playoff Paul say, hey, look, mm -hmm. man, you they so good. Say. Take my jersey. You know what I mean? Yep. And he gave it to him right there. They all had mad love for Luca, but there's only one problem for, for the Dallas Mavericks. They got to get him some help. 
Oh I yeah. Mean, and 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 also Tim Hardaway Sr. came on out and said he made it plain to everybody. He said, no, Dallas, you know, Christmas <laughs> poor zingus, that's P-O-O-R Zing us <laughs> is how you spell that. Poor Zing. He wasn't the main guy. It was mm -hmm. my boy, Tim Hardaway mm -hmm. Jr. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. He's telling the truth. Well, no Porzingis was brought in. Yeah, Porzingis was brought in to be, you know, he was supposed to be, and it's probably a bad comparison because Anthony Davis is hit and miss, but he was supposed to be that number two guy coming in. He's basically Porzingis has become a role player. That's not why he was brought in. Right. And so, yeah, he's absolutely right in what he's saying. He's got to get some help. Luca dominated the game, and that's why he's earned the respect of players all over the NBA, but he's got to get some help if they're going to make the next step. No doubt about it, man. Porzingis is a shooter, and that's about it. I mean, you can't have a 7'3 guy standing outside just shooting 20-footers. He got to block a shot sometime, get a rebound, or do something. You know what I mean? He um, he did have 11, 11 rebounds, 16 points in that game seven, but still, he doesn't do enough to help him. And they're locked in that contract with him, and I don't know who they're going to get to take it. They might have to take back, back a bad contract to dump him, but they need to get him off their books ASAP. I don't know who would take Porzingis, but – you never know a team like Golden State in the right move. They might they might swap somebody for him or somebody like that. But they got to get rid of him, man, if they can get him off their books. Man, that dude. Every time I look at him, I think about Sean Bradley. The kind yep. of deal we got. Sean Bradley. You're right. It's just, it's just he's just terrible, you know. I mean, Boban, to <laughs> me, I like his effort and what he's able to do, but you know. Uh, you're going to get him in foul trouble. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the Clippers was able to figure that thing out. And I'm going to say this, man, really on paper, they are the team to beat in the West. Now, if you notice of all the teams, nobody on that whole team that's left has nothing but one championship in that whole organization. And y'all know which team it is? Philadelphia. Yeah. Philadelphia. That's it. You know, yep. now Atlanta, they had one, but it wasn't in Atlanta. It was another organization. Yeah. But I'm scared. I, I keep thinking in the East, it's going to come down to Atlanta and uh, and and, and uh, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Man, the Hawks, I told you, that Hawks team, I, they're my favorite team of all the teams that are left. Even though I have old Clipper gear today, the Hawks are my favorite team out of the teams left. And I love that young team. And I said I was going to say this today. I, this morning, man, I was thinking, I was watching the game over, game uh, one. I was watching it again this morning. I think Trey Young and Bogdan Bogdanovich, that, that crazy shooter they got, I think those two, man, are a top three backcourt in the in, I mean, I think they're in the top three out of the backcourts in the NBA because the Portland backcourt has been kind of the last couple of years, people have been giving them the top nod. But Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum, that's about to come to an end. One of them definitely is getting traded, probably C.J. And then, uh, you know, Clay. Uh, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry hasn't been going on for the last year or two. Hopefully, if Clay is healthy, that'll resume. But I'm telling you, man. And then, of course, in Washington, you got uh, Russell Westbrook and Bradley Bill. But I'd put Trey Young and Bogdanovich against anybody. Those two young boys don't play, man. They they can really play. The Hawks got a heck of a backcourt. Yes, they definitely do. They have a, an incredible team, and they can they can get the job done. So kudos to them for what they're doing in the league and making it happen. So I just got to say kudos to this organization. So, and we, we didn't even say nothing about the coach, Nate McMillan, man. You know what? I, I'm mad, man, because uh, about a week ago or two weeks ago, the play, uh, the coaches voted for coach of the year. And we yeah. all know um, uh, Williams at, um, at, uh, at uh, Phoenix one, right? Which I thought he should have then today uh, or either. And then today they give it to uh, the, Thibodeau, the, the right? press, give it, to, give it to um, Thibodeau, Thibodeau with the yeah. Knicks. And I'm like, what about Williams at Phoenix and Nate McMillan, man? I mean, yeah, Tibbs did a good job in New York, but I don't know. I don't think well, he should have won it. Yeah, well, it's the New York market. And so know. they all, you know, it's, it's by, by default. It's, it's, if they give it to him in that big market, they're going to give it to him. And Tibbs did a pretty good job. Again, they didn't show up in the playoffs. I mean, that was a disappointing series right. uh, just to win one game uh, for New York. But other than that, I mean, the, exactly. the regular season, they had a good season. But I think you're right, Dre. Nate McMillan just took him out. Like you yeah. said, it beat him four games yeah. to one. Four games to like, well, sweep. Yeah. Right. Look, look at look at the other coaches here. But anyway, Tibbs, I'm I'm happy for the Knicks, but they right. gone. They gone. The Hawks are playing with that young team. They got and Capella and 
And, you know, they got to figure out in the offseason how do they keep Collins, man, John Collins, because he'll, he'll be a free agent. Everybody else on that team pretty much will be back. Lou Williams probably playing his last year there, but they got a team, man. Those young boys can play, and they're hungry, and they got a couple of guys that's been injured, ain't even been playing much. You know, Hunter and, and, and the other kid, they, they got a bright future, man. The Hawks have one of the brightest futures in oh, the yeah. NBA, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah they're, and they're fearless. They're a young team that's fearless, led by Trey Young. And so, again, yeah. uh, Philly had a hard time. Yeah, Cam defending, Reddish. Turning, that was the other yeah, player I was saying. They haven't even had Cam Reddish and Hunter almost all season, and they still dominated. Yeah, yeah. yeah not, I, it's just one game. I still expect Philly to win that, that series. I think Philly was sleepwalking. In fact, made a game out of it. They were down 26 and cut it to three. Atlanta was struggling to get the ball in bounds and keep it, yeah. maintain the possession. They almost gave that game away. I expect Philly to win that series, but Trey Young, uh, Trey Young and the uh, – the Hawks, they got a bright future. Let's talk about the coaches because we got two African American coaches. We got Doc and we got, of course, Nate going against it, man. So, you know, Doc is going to definitely make adjustments and get the job done. I feel like they're going to tie that series up and head to Atlanta tied in one apiece. Oh, if you want to hear another one of my guarantees, I, I'm like Barkley oh, now. Up, guaranteed. News break. Guaranteed. I, I, Here we go. You need that news breaking news thing. Yeah, you need that breaking news thing, man. Listen, I I, I guarantee Philly will win game. But I'm not guaranteeing Philly's going to win that series. I'm giving the Hawks a good shot to win that series, man. But I guarantee you, Philly will win game two, tied up. But man, when they go down to Atlanta, the Hawks might win two like they did against the Knicks because those guys are so confident. Um, Yeah. Philly, you know, it hurts them. And I love Ben Simmons. I'm a Ben Simmons fan, but the fact that he can't shoot. When you get in the playoffs and some of these games, and Nate Millen is a Nate McMillan, the coach for the Hawks, is a great defensive coach. Man, they kind of you see how they back off Ben Simmons like he got a disease. Right. They let yeah, him they shoot. Force him. They force and him. They, and they foul him. him. So I don't know, man. They they might let him beat half forty a game, but just shut down those other guys because Danny Green. They don't. They're not really worried about him and Tybal. Curry's going to hit a couple of threes, but I think. I'm giving the Hawks a good chance to win that series. I really am. I think the Sixers probably will prevail, but I'm giving the Hawks now a good chance to win. Now you got me confused again. Did you hear that, Kevin? Well, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm saying Philly will probably win, but I'm giving the Hawks a good chance to win. I really yeah. am. But so, yeah. game two, Philly's going to win. Okay, yeah, Philly, be- Philly better. Yeah, Philly better win game two. I, I expect it to be a good series, but as I said, I think Philly comes out of it. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead. We got to take a few minutes to talk about this series. And that's about the Lakers and the Suns. Oh, man. Oh, Dre. <laughs> Dre. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Talk to me, Mr. Bailey. Okay. And I'm going to say my thing, and then Kevin's going to come behind. First of all, man, if I'm LeBron James and I'm on that team, I'm like, man, yeah, I will walk off the court after that game. Now, for those of you that, that complain, he did go and hang out with Devin Booker and gave him his jersey and everything. But he was frustrated because of his teammates. He had no help. You know, you got Schroeder. You, and everybody hadn't been talking about Gasol. Where in the heck has he been? Montrez Harrell, Andre Drummond. I mean, Kuzma, KCP, they were all no-shows. When I look up mm. there and I see Eddie Matthews, who used to play for the, Ma- <laughs> for the Mavericks out there. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you're pulling straws. And LeBron, you know, he takes care of himself. But, you know, I think personally, somebody went up to the doctor and told them the AD was good enough to start. I think the pressure of social media got to him, and especially what Charles Barkley did, you know. Really threw him under the bus. Kevin, your comments before Drake close it out. Well, basically, uh, it comes comes down to this. I think the Lakers didn't have a backup plan for when AD went down, and who does? But I mean, if you got to kind of have your stuff together because you know AD, AD is either not going to show up or he's going to get hurt. And the Lakers didn't have a backup plan for when he went down, and they looked pathetic. And and and, and you know, in that last game, I think at one point down twenty nine points, it was a defeated team. It's like they went into that game knowing they they had no shot, and that's how they played. Okay, Dre, you're up. Well, the Lakers, I, I've said this all season, they had an inferior roster after they won that championship in the bubble. Rob Palenka and Magic Johnson put this team together. So uh, Magic Johnson, I'm sorry. Rob Palenka and LeBron James put this team together. And LeBron can't blame anybody but him, man. He he basically is the other GM on that team. And he told them who he wanted. And they went out and got his guys, half six of the guys, including him, on Clutch Sports, which he owns the mm-hmm. agency. You know, So that hurt him a lot, man, because, okay, 
Rondo, still playing with the Clippers, still alive in the playoffs. Danny Green, still alive with Philly. Uh, Dwight Howard, Dwight Howard, still alive with Philly. JaVale McGee, still alive with Denver. Those four guys on that championship team, those were core pieces, man. Those were glue guys, and they let them all go. And now everybody's saying, okay, I see what you meant, Andre. They should have kept at least two of those guys because they needed that, and they didn't get that. And those guys, those replacements, man, those, those um, first of all, man, Gasol is straight garbage. He shouldn't he's, have even been on done. that team. If yeah. he would have been, should have been a, at the most a backup. That guy's mm-hmm. done. He's done. And you, you started out the year with him as your starting center. You ended the year with him as your starting center in that last game. And you had Drummond and Montrez Harrell. They did. That coach is horrible. I hope he walks away and goes to Boston or somewhere and takes a job or Orlando back where he used to be because there are, he's a terrible coach. Give, I want Jason Kidd to coach that team. Everybody's saying they, they wish that um, the coach Frank for the Vogel. Lakers, Vogel, would get out of here, man. He's a terrible yeah. coach, first of all. But man, what did he do at Memphis, man? I mean, how did he get the job? Man, Vogel, remember he was into Pacers. And yeah, stuff. Well, places. come on. You don't want me to tell the truth how he got the job? Come, come on. on. No, don't don't do it. Thing. No, hold it, okay. hold it, hold it, hold it. All right, it. because I'm just saying. <laughs> come on, man. Vogel, Vogel is not that great of a coach. And and he's got good coaches under him that should be the head coach, like, Lion, like uh, Lionel Hollins and Jason Kidd. And he's making terrible decisions, man. The roster wasn't put together well. Wesley Matthews had very left, uh, left in the tank. Markeith Morris. Ben McLemore, Jared Dudley was horrible. I could play better than him still to this day. They signed some guys because that was LeBron's buddies, like Dudley yeah. saying, oh, he'll be good for the locker room. Man, mm-hmm. they needed that spot coming down the stretch. That's why they lost so many games. They didn't, they didn't have a point guard when LeBron was out and Schroeder uh, was out sick and so forth and so on. What yeah. about Caruso? Caruso is a, is a rumor. Let me tell you something, man. You talk about overrated. He's, yeah. He got the – well, his name is Street Clothes number two. Because he's in street clothes almost as much as Anthony Davis is. Mm. He's always hurt. You mm. saw the last game. Oh, he's out after the first half. He's very fragile. Nobody ever brings attention to that. Look at how many games Caruso has missed this season. He misses a ton of games with little injuries. He's always out. Anthony Davis is always out. And the name yep. that Charles Barkley gave him is going to stick. Street clothes. He's And he's, after this last game, and, and one of the reporters, one of my reporter friends asked him, what are you going to do different and how are you going to get yourself together? Cause you're always hurt. Oh, well, I don't have to prove anything to anybody. I know what injuries I have. And so to me hearing that he's in denial because they were saying, don't you think you got to have a real strenuous summer of working out and getting your body do something differently? Cause whatever you've been doing hasn't worked, but he's in denial. I don't see Anthony Davis ever being a dominant player. I don't not ever again. He was good at one time, but now that he's got paid and now that guy's he's, he's like a fat cat, man. He's not going to work hard. They, the Lakers are in trouble because they don't have a lot of cap room and they got some and a lot of free agents they got to decide on. And how do they go out and get other players? They're not, they don't have any cap room. They got to trade Caldwell Pope and Kuzma. And who the heck is going to really want them, man? Because neither one of them have shown that much. Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be really tough for the Lakers to be – I think they're going to be a light about how they were this year. I think that's what you'll see for the next couple of years from the Lakers. They're going to have to go sign guys to one-year contracts, veterans that they can find that, you know, can't find another home maybe, just like what they had this year. But those guys might not work out. And then when when Drummond, I mean, when Davis is hurt in his street clothes or if LeBron gets another injury, they turn into a lottery team. So I don't have a lot of confidence in them. Taylor Horton Tucker, the youngster, he he's a restricted free agent. They can re-sign him, and they hope they do. But And then they got to decide basically between him, Caruso, and Schroeder, maybe two of those three they bring back. Magic Johnson came on record the other day and said, Dennis Schroeder's not a Laker. He said he doesn't mm. give the effort, and Magic's not a fan of his, and neither am I. So well, they got some things to figure out. Montrez Harrell's probably going to walk away because they dogging him, and he's not going to stay around and be third string to Gasol and people like that. And then Drummond probably won't be brought back because they can't afford him. And even if they do, I'm not sure if he fits. He didn't look that great with them. So the Lakers you go got from some being issues. the sixth man of the year and getting all this playing time and they're calling your name out, don't you think he got to be sick still living in L.A.? And it's just like he just oh, yeah. wiped away. He disappeared in a mm-hmm. year. He, he put out a post and said right after the last game, he said, I go from being six man of the year, averaging so many points, so many minutes, mm-hmm. to this year, not DNP, did not even play in a few of the games in the finals. I mean, in, in that series, rather. It's in their opening playoff series. So 
Yeah, he's frustrated. He can opt out of his contract nine nine point seven mil, and trust me, he will. He'll be gone, maybe to Charlotte or somewhere like that. So the Lakers got some issues, man. That team next year is going to be interesting to see how they put it together. Because once again, you only really got two trade chips: Kyle Kuzma and uh, Kentavious Caldwell Pope, the worst shooting guard in the NBA. Y'all know I keep saying that. So those two both make thirteen mil. So if you package them both together, if somebody's stupid enough to take those two guys. Maybe you and, and maybe they can get Schroeder in a sign and trade. Maybe they get lucky and get a Zach Levine from Chicago or Bradley Bill from Washington. But I doubt if they can. They want they would love one of those two guys. It would be great if they get them. But I doubt if those teams are going to take those guys I mentioned in return. Well, Schroeder is another one of those handpicked guys by LeBron. And now he's going to the rumor is going to ask for Max <laughs> for Max mm-hmm. money. So I, I'll be surprised if he's still in L.A. after this season. Exactly. Yeah, they in trouble, man. Laker fans, I'm sorry to break the news to you, but I don't see them being a championship team for a long time. So so Friday, what did you think they was talking about at the barbershop? Because that happened on Thursday night. What was the word you hear in that KJLH? What, what was you oh, hearing out there? Whew. People were all over the Lakers. Well, it, a lot of the things I just told you is what people were mad about. They mad about Vogel, Frank Vogel, the coach, about Palenka, the GM, and saying what they need to do. And they're mad about... Um, of course, they're mad at Anthony Davis for never, always being hurt, never mm-hmm. not being reliable and not being able to play. And they're mad at those guys like Kuzma and, and a Caldwell Pope. They're saying, get them out of here. People are fed up with those two guys because they just don't deliver. They just do yeah, not well, deliver. They need, they need to get rid of Gass- Gasol. Oh, they yeah. need to get rid of uh, Drummond. He got to go, you know. Yep. Kuzma and and already, him. already with only six guys on the contract, they're already at like $105 million. And the cap is a hundred and I think it's, I'm sorry, the cap is going to be like 112. So, I mean, like where are they going to get the money? That's why they got to do some trades to improve themselves. They don't, it's no other way around it. And you've got a lot of free agents. So even though I wouldn't want any of those guys back, I mean, maybe if I could get Caruso cheap, I definitely would want Taylor Hoyt and Tucker. I wouldn't even want Schroeder back to be honest with you. Right. Rumor already has it. They might, you know, Lonzo Ball might end up back out here. They, they got to get a point guard down a center, no matter how you slice it and dice it. I thought Ball went to Chicago after he left New Orleans. No, well, he it, has, it hasn't happened yet. No, okay. he'll be a free agent this summer. Free agency starts August 2nd. But it's going to be interesting, but the Lakers' options are going to be limited as far as picking up guys. It's going to be guys pretty much that want to play for cheap, and that's only okay. veterans. And then, How much time does LeBron have left, man? Because he is – he's um, he's at his – to me, i say he got one or two years left. Yeah, I, I already you know. see a slide. I already could see him slide. Even oh, though he yeah. still looks good in spurts, I see already a slight, a slight slide. And you see it, man. Come on. Father Time never uses LeBron. will be 37. Yeah. Yep. Father, uh, LeBron, uh, Kevin, he'll be 37 next year, man. Yeah. So you never yeah. know. And injury don't heal as quick. And, yeah. you know, I just think with him and Anthony Davis getting all the money, the bulk of what they what – they're like LeBron's going to make over $41 million next year. Yeah. And Anthony Davis is going to make over $35 million. So that's most of your cap, eight up with two players. And then when you throw in uh, Contavious Caldwell Pope at 13 and Kyle Kuzma at 13, that's most of your money gone, you know? Well, so they got to decide. That's why I said they got to move those guys out of there, at least one of them, and then yeah. figure out what's what. Yeah, yeah LeBron, right. LeBron is at the point where he can no longer carry a basketball team. He's going right. to need a number two. So it catches, time catches up to everybody. And right now it's working on LeBron. Gotcha. Yep. All right, we got to take this break. We got to get Lucy Pearl up here. We got to get ready to talk <laughs> about uh, Terry Stotts is being is, is gone from Portland. We got to talk about uh, Denver. We got to talk about the Jazz and much more. You're hanging out with Sports in the Mix here on the crew. I'm Cedric Bailey along with Kevin Simon and, of course, Dre Russell. We'll be right back. And we are back. Cedric Bailey in the house, getting ready to broadcast live Tuesday from Ardmore, Oklahoma at Sidelines. Man, they got flat screens. And Dre, you coming, man. You coming to hang out with us. Well, I mean, Kevin is. Dre, we got to figure out something, man. We have got to get together. I, I think we need to, Oklahoma. Kevin, we need to, we need to go to California. That's what we need. Yeah, we need to go to California. That's home yeah. for me. I'm always up for that. So yeah, we need to get to the, <laughs> we West need to Coast. go to yeah. California during football season. That's yeah. what we need. Oh yeah. Well, let's make so it I, happen. So I can wear my 
my raid well my raiders gear you oh, know what Lord. i mean Oh, but they're in Vegas. They're in Vegas. They ain't I in know no that, more, man, Sam. but they're going to play a California <laughs> team. That's where we got to go. Or we can go to Vegas. You know what I mean? Yeah, we they, can do that. There you go. They, they'll yeah, they get they I'm all for that. Yeah. They, they can open up the black the hole, man. The black hole is going to be open. People are coming back in the stadiums, and they can't yeah. wait. They're going to make their money. Oh, Trust yeah. Me. No doubt about it. No doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. So let's, let's talk boxing. My dad calling me on the phone. Mm. <laughs> Did you see the Floyd Mayweather fight? I said, Dad, let me, take something. let me take my glasses off so I can look at y'all, look dead at this camera and tell on, you how man. I feel about it. Now, you know you can't see without those glasses. Uh, the- I can see enough to say something about like Mayweather. <laughs> I'm going to take mine off, too. Hey, Kevin, I'm going to take mine off, too. <laughs> take yours off, Kevin. <laughs> Ain't none of us can see where the dog is. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> let me just say this, man. How many fingers are holding up? How many fingers is that? Twelve? Is that- Three. How many fingers you see, Jeff Cedric? <laughs> Three, man. Listen. <laughs> okay. Boxing ain't nothing since Floyd Mayweather is in there. They ain't going for the knockout. It's all just a matter of can I just coast to the next round. Now, now, what happened, Dre, on this this, this exhibition deal that Mayweather now, did? Now, what full was disclosure, that? man, I did not watch this mess because I thought it was just that mess. Right. But I did see the highlights and, and the, after the interviews, and it was just an exhibition. They don't even determine a winner. They don't even keep a score. I'm like, well, what's the use? But people are spending their money watching this stuff. Mayweather boxing against some guy who's popular on social media. I don't even remember the guy's name. He's not even a real boxer. Yeah. And and then they had the opener was Chad Ocho Cinco, who was Chad Johnson, the football player who we used to know him as. He fought some guy and he got knocked down so viciously because he ain't a boxer. <laughs> Hold on, it was his first fight. He didn't I'm see like, Nate. Nate, uh, what was his name? Nate, Nate Robinson. Uh, Nate Robinson. Nate Ro- he didn't see the Nate Robinson Same fight. Same thing, man. Matter of fact, I think Mayweather was fighting the guy who knocked down Nate Robinson. I think. I think that's who he was fighting. Poor I don't Nate. Know, but... Yeah. Poor anyway, Nate. Anyway, oh, it was God. just garbage, man. And people are buying these fights, watching them. And there's not even real fights. They're straight exhibitions. So Mayweather and that guy just held on to each other and did some love taps. And then afterwards, they said Mayweather wasn't going to hit the guy hard because it's bad for business. They trying to get right. paid. And I'm sure that was part of the agreement. And two, this guy was twice Mayweather's size. Uh, Cedric, that's what was crazy. This guy was a, he'd be considered a heavyweight if it was a real fight. And Mayweather, he, this guy had to weigh at least 200 or 210. And Mayweather's around 150. So it was just a mess. It was a mess. Total waste of time. Mess. His, That's what I say. His name was Logan Paul. Sound like yeah, Paul Bunyan. Yeah, like. that's him. That's him. Yeah. So I'm like, man. So I'm Mayweather mess. was like, yeah, he, he might be able to stay in the ring with some real heavyweights. I mean, what kind of stuff is that yeah. say, after the fight? <laughs> he might. I'm, looking, I'm looking at this deal where it says a powerful blow sent former NFL Ooh. wide receiver Chad Ocho Singer Johnson stumbling to the ground in a boxing ring instead of on the football turf. Man, he got knocked the heck out. <laughs> no more Ocho. <laughs> yep. Yep. If it was that movie Friday back in the day, uh, they do that. He got knocked the hell out. Wow. <laughs> Which what Chris yeah, Tucker yeah. said. Whoa, no. Yeah, he got knocked out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, they said that uh, the Paul, who was 26, weighed, he was bigger than Mayweather by 34 and a half pounds. That's why. That's why they made an exhibition because it, yeah, it wasn't a real fight. fight. Yeah, that wasn't a real saying. fight. I knew he was much bigger than him. I told you, no winner. Yeah, no winner was declared. It was just an exhibit, just an old junk fight. Uh, yeah, yep. way to make some extra money. Yeah, and they yep. all made some money. Yep. yep. Now, Chad Johnson Ocho Cinco fought against a mixed martial arts and bare knuckle fighter. What in the heck is a bare knuckle fighter? <laughs> That's an old throwback, man. You know, I, I know, right? Used to fight way back in the day, right? <laughs> Jack Johnson, Dave, they were better knuckle fighters way back in the day. Man, that's a waste of time. That's a waste of time, man. <laughs> next, they're going to have rappers fighting, you know? Yeah, Jay-Z that's next. versus Flavor Flav or something. Yeah, People yeah, yeah. run by it, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, you know they will. Oh, yeah. Snoop Dogg versus My question is, Charlie Wilson or something. You why, know what I mean? <laughs> why would Ocho Single get in the box ring? Is he desperate for money or something? What's up? I, I, and attention. Must be. Yeah. You know? yeah. There, there, there you go. Yeah. There you go, Kevin. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> they all end up in the they, ring. They, they, <laughs> like it's, when their careers are over, like, hey, they all end up in the ring, man. I don't, I don't, who knows? <laughs> yep. it, it, they still trying to help Nate Robinson back up. because he <laughs> <laughs> Man, that all was right. embarrassing. <laughs> Let me shift gears. Let's talk tennis, man. Okay. Coco Golf, man. What is the deal on this girl? 
Hey, yeah, yeah so Coco's, yeah, she's on the come. Coco just won her second uh, professional title a couple of weeks ago down there in, uh, I think, in Rome. And so, yeah, she's uh, yep. finally through to the quarterfinals in a major mm-hmm. for the first time. So I think uh, yeah, she's on the right track, and uh, hopefully she'll uh, finish strong. Yep, she's in the French Open. And yeah, I really yeah. hope she pulls it out because, you know, most of the other people that we know and the, and the young sister who's having issues have pulled out. So, uh, you know, I was hoping that uh, Sloan Stevens could have lasted longer. She and Serena Williams are done. So Coco, 17, man. And like we talked about off the air, this girl might be another Serena Williams. I mean, she's only 17 and she's pretty doggone, doggone good right now. Yeah, she is. She's uh, got another match. And, you know, they play all these foreigners over there. So she's she that's about all that's left. I think Coco's the last American standing, if I'm if I'm correct. And so yeah, I it's think, uh, it, yeah, not, I not think a whole, she's whole lot of like number twenty four and stuff, man. And, and the one thing I yeah. like about her, her parents, her mama and daddy, is handling her business. Can mm-hmm. you imagine all the phone calls and people saying, uh, "We can take her and do this," and by the way, sign this contract and we get twenty five percent. Well, you know what's going on. It always does. But right now, uh, they're standing strong together. We'll see if they'll keep that going because she's on the right track. Again, she's uh, through the quarterfinals for the first time in her career in a major. And mm-hmm. uh, hopefully she can she can keep it going. But it, it won't be easy. I thought the road was clear for Serena. All the bigger names got knocked out in front of Serena and she couldn't get through. Uh, yep. Got knocked out in straight sets. It put up, a, I, I thought, a poor effort. Didn't even look like she wanted to be out there. Even yep. though she had, I thought, a clear road to get to number 24, didn't make it happen. So it's not going to be easy for Coco, but uh, she's done pretty well anyway. Yeah, going into this French Open, she was rated number 24 in the world. So hopefully this will bring her ratings up higher and she'll end up really strong. Yeah, well, kudos to her parents, Corey and Candy Goff. C, 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 G. <laughs> okay, that's a whole lot of letters. That's a lot mm-hmm. of <laughs> And then they're from Florida. His dad, her dad formerly was a basketball player and her mama was a track athlete. So I remember we watched them. What was that last summer when we watched her compete and everything and the world was just watching this young lady, you know? And even, you know, in, in tennis, if you notice the legends like Billy Jean uh, King and all them, they all try, Chris Everett, they always try to get them in there to, you know, always try to find some flaw but she mm-hmm. silences her critics. Did y'all notice that when they're up there doing yeah. that stuff? Yeah, yeah. So I'm just, uh, I'm looking for big things for her. Uh, what is her name, Naomi Osaka? She yeah, stepped yeah. down. She didn't oh, yeah. even participate in this one neither, did she? She no, started. She's she not. won, she, yeah, she won her first well, match yeah, and then she stepped started. down after the, yeah, and then stepped down after, yeah. after that because she had some uh, anxiety issues, some depression yep. she was battling. So she decided for it's best for her and the tournament to step aside. And so, again, I thought that would open it up for Serena. And obviously that, that didn't work out. But hopefully Naomi will get back and they've got a Sloan is playing a little bit better. So you, you got a couple of uh, these women tennis players uh, trying to make strides in the right direction. How come mm-hmm. we can't get no brothers up in there in the tennis deal? What's up with well, that? The I brothers, know, are, yeah. The, the only brothers are from France, man. They're, they're, they're not many American brothers that are, are uh, you know, top tennis players. You know, they got a, they got a few from France that played in the tournament. They got knocked out fairly early, disappointingly. But yeah, right now, uh, in in terms of American male blacks, not many on yeah. the uh, big stage. So Arthur Ashe was definitely the real deal, without a doubt. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. He had to go against Jim, Jimmy Connors and. Uh, let's see who else was that? Uh, beyond was Borg, beyond Borg, Borg yeah, yeah. Uh, Stassi and those guys, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Ash was, yeah, one of the greatest tennis players of all time, Arthur Ash, no yes. doubt about it. Yeah, but those names, at least for that, when but Macaro, dude, that dude was crazy, dude. Was oh, crazy. no doubt, is. yeah, he still is crazy. Yeah, no, he, I listen to his commentary, he's pretty good as a commentator, but he's still crazy, but yeah, yeah, yeah. He, but Ash didn't say <laughs> nothing, he just let his ta- tennis racket quiet. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I got it done. Yeah. Yep. Got the job. Rod, Rod Laver. Those are some yeah, of the guys yeah. he played against back then. No doubt. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but I'm gonna tell you, man, it was just good to see African Americans doing doing that in tennis. So kudos to them. So now we're ready to talk a little basketball. Let's go ahead and break it back and and talk about uh, the Utah Jazz and how they were able to put Memphis away. So Dre, let's get your feedback on that one. Well, you know, the cream rose to the top on that one. Memphis had a lot of people excited, like me, 
They got a lot of good young players. Once again, like the Atlanta Hawks, they have a bright future. A lot of good young players. John Morant showed he could dominate. But in the end, the Jazz were just too strong. And once Donovan Mitchell, who missed game one, the one uh, Memphis victory, once he got right. back in there, man, they it was all over for, for Memphis. So uh, Utah was a really solid team. And uh, they look really good. They're the number one, number one seed, if you will, in the West. And let's see what happens now with the Clippers and the Utah Jazz. I think that's going to be a good series. I think the Clippers are either going to dominate and sweep them, or they might get swept. I don't. I think it's going to be a good series. But let's see what happens. I think the Clippers. If, every time I think they're hitting their stride, they're going to come up and lose two or three games in a row and disappoint yeah. them. But let's yeah, see you know, these. You know. So let's see. It kind of reminds me, remember when the Clippers used to have to go up against Golden State Warriors and you went seven? And, man, yep. and the question is, did you have enough tank and the gas tank to get it past the next round? And mm -hmm. that's what we're about to find out. So, well, uh, Yeah, I think this Mavericks test was a good test for the Clippers. Maybe now, you mm -hmm. know, that they, they uh, awakened and they got to come out and play, you know, better than they you know, they played in that uh, Mavericks uh, the series, but I think now as a Ben, I picked Brooklyn and the Clippers in the finals, and so I think now maybe that test by the Mavericks and Luca will propel them uh, to get to the finals. We'll see. Still a lot of a lot of, a lot of game to be played, but we'll see what happens again. In the Utah, as Dre mentioned, yeah, Donovan Mitchell was the only reason they lost that first game. I think we all kind of realized once Donovan was back, Utah was going to win that series. Memphis is young. I think they're the youngest, second youngest team in the league. I think Minnesota's the youngest, so. Uh, they've got a lot of growing up to do. They grew up a whole lot this past season. And so with Brooks and Morant, they'll be good for a long time. But right now, they're still pretty young. But Utah, is, uh, you know, did, Utah did what I thought they did with uh, Mitchell and Atlanta. So mm -hmm. who are you going with on that, Kevin? Utah or the Clippers? No, I got the Clippers in the finals. So yeah, okay. I got the Clippers in, in the in the, the uh, in, in the in the in Brooklyn in the finals. So those are my two teams. So I got the Clippers getting past, obviously getting past to the next round. All right, all Dre, right. what do you think? Talk to me. All right, let me tell you, Utah's tough, man. Rudy Gobert. And, and see, here's something. Teron Lue's going to have to alter his strategy now. I think he's going to have to go back big again like he was in the beginning of the Dallas series because Rudy Gobert, he'll tear him up. I don't think they can outquick him and go with this, this, that small lineup. We'll see how Teron Lue coaches. But with him, Donovan Mitchell, Mike Conley, Joe Ingles, Bogdanovich, they got a great core, Utah. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb. And I'm gonna call for a Clipper upset. I'm gonna say Clippers. Clip, I, I gotta pick, hey, Clippers are gonna beat the Utah Jazz. You I, gotta pick Clippers with all that. Clipper yeah, because you look at yourself in the mirror. You got the hand the shirt off. He can't pick Utah if he's wearing all that Clipper again. But Utah <laughs> solid. But I, all year I've said the Utah. That's pretty good, Kevin. All year though, I've said the Utah Jazz are a really good team, but not a championship team. Right. I think they're a regular season team. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Let's see. Let's find out. Well, I'm, I'm pulling for, I'm pulling for the Clippers. I'm, I'm, and seriously, as I watch them up against the Mavericks, I, I, I'm, I, I want Tyrone Liu to be able to get the respect. Let's, let's get some of these brothers up in there coaching to go up against each other in the finals. You know, yeah. it's a shame yeah. that Philadelphia and Atlanta got to be like that. But yeah. you know, hey, mm -hmm. I, 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 if anybody I'm going to support, I'm going to support Tyrone Liu because he's going to show you I was down 0-2 to the Mavericks and I made adjustments. And he yeah. was able to turn that organization around. What, Nothing it, against the other teams. No, no, and it's, you know, it's just ahead. like just like Dre said, and it took Lou a while to make the adjustment, but he finally he <laughs> made the adjustment just in time. They started trapping Luca, get the ball out of his hands in game six. They didn't do as much as that in game seven. Uh, but yeah, I think that kind of got the series turned around in their favor in game six when they started trapping Luca to get the ball out of their hands. But yeah, I think you're absolutely right. So hopefully we'll see what happens. But you know, a lot of these black coaches are having good seasons. What about this band kid who played at Florida State for Lennon Hamilton? Man, isn't that incredible how he played that great ball against the Mavericks, man? Um, which one? For, which player? Yeah, for the Clippers. Terrence Mann. Mann. Terrence Mann. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Terrence Mann. Yeah. Oh, Terrence Mann is a good young player, man. Last year, the Clippers tried him as a point guard. They thought he'd be the replacement for um, when they sent the kid to uh, OKC, the young point guard they had to get rid of and send to OKC as part of the trade. Uh, that ended up bringing in uh, Paul George. But, um, you know, he's not a point guard per se, but he's a really good player. He's just a good player. He's 6'5", and he can do it all. And they have a lot of confidence in him. So, yeah, I love Terrence Mann. I think he's a good young player. All right, and also Maxie for uh, the Clippers, man. That dude from Kentucky, he is doing a great job for Doc Rivers, you know. 
for the Sixers, no doubt yeah, about it, man. Sixers. Yeah, yeah, Maxi can flat out play. He'll be their point guard. He'll be a starting point guard in the league for a long time. His yeah. his knock is defense, but he he tries, he tries. So, but I, I, they better not try and put him on uh, Young. <laughs> they better not put him on uh, Trey Young, though. Trey Young will eat him up. So you see, yeah. they're trying things like Danny Green and some of the taller defenders trying to follow Trey Young. But the only thing with Maxi, yeah, once his defense gets a lot better, but no, even even if his defense doesn't get any better with the way the NBA is played today, he's going to be a long time point guard. He could play. I like him a lot. All right. Speaking of guards, now we got to talk about the Portland Trailblazers, man. I, I mean, first of all, against Denver, man, hell, I called Kevin. I said, man, did you just see what this dude did? He hit bank shots, three pointers, scored fifty five points. This dude, he just don't have the support to help him. Get the job done. So what is Portland going to do, Dre? Damian Lillard, Dame Dollar. Dame. Dame. He's, he's probably the most impressive player in the league right now, in my opinion, along with Steph Curry, man. He, those guys are just unbelievable every night. And Damian Lillard is a heck of a player. Now, trade rumors have started. I don't think Portland's going to move him. They'd be crazy. if they, But they could get a lot back for him, but I don't think they're going to trade him. But C.J. McCollum, once again, the other guard is, 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 is on the block, and I've heard a lot of places where he could end up. But, um, you know, they're going to break it up. Terry Stotts, the coach, is gone. And they said they're going to interview 25 to 30 coaches. Of course, Chauncey Billups, who's here with the Clippers, wants to interview for the job. Jason Kidd backed out the other day and said he doesn't want to be considered because Damian Lillard came out and said he wanted Jason Kidd right. to be the head coach. But Jason already backed out. And he said, no, nah, that might be a bad situation now since Damian came out publicly. But Orlando's, I mean, uh, Portland's going to break it up, man. They're going to break it up and we'll see who ends up where um, they got, you know, they got some good players. So they're definitely going to be trading and their GM is known to do a lot of trades anyway. He, that guy used to be the Clipper GM back in the day, but he'll do yeah. some trades in a minute. So we'll, we'll see, but Orlando's breaking it up. I mean, I'm sorry, Portland is breaking it up. Well, Orlando and, did uh, fire their coach too, by the way. Yeah, yeah they did. Yeah. Terry, he stepped down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Terry Stotts who, who Portland just fired is rumored. As a, as a possible replacement in Orlando or Indiana Pacers. So we'll see where he ends up. He'll probably land on his feet uh, and have another job before next season. Yeah, Stotts had, yeah, Stotts was there with nine seasons and they had a hard time getting out of the first round. I think they lost in the first yeah. round three out of the last four seasons. So some people mm -hmm. were surprised that uh, they let him go. I was not. It's, it's, I think he, he got up, you know, he had gave him plenty of rope uh, to yeah. get All that right. thing going. And so it was time. Yeah. Well, listen, folks, we're wrapping up segment two, Sports of the Mix here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network with the crew, Dre Russell and Kevin Simon. When we come back, we got to talk a little football because Julio is gone to Tennessee <laughs> to the volunteer state. <laughs> is, is that right, Julio Jones? Get Lucy Julio. Burrow ready because we're going to find out. So keep it right here <laughs> on Sports of the Mix with the crew. And we are back. We're talking sports in the mix with the crew, Cedric Bailey, Kevin Simon, and Dre Russell in the house from L.A. to Tyler, Texas, to Oklahoma. We're breaking it down, and we're getting ready for a big event, grand opening of, of course, in Ardmore, Oklahoma, Sideline Sports Bar and Grill. You'll be able to see the BGC banner there. We're going to be there. And, of course, this group right here, we will be making it either to Vegas or California. We'll be there in the fall. We're going to look at the calendar. Oh, yeah. See what we can do to do something. I really want to go to L.A. or go to Vegas, man, and uh, do something special to be at one of those games there and just uh, cover it. So we have to look at the NFL schedule. So now we are less than, what, 93 days away from uh, the opener. Can't wait. And we're going to be breaking it down and everything. But we got news coming out of the AFC. Julio got what he wanted. And uh, Kevin, let's hear from you and, and talk about what Uncle Julio got and how he landed in the uh, volunteer state of uh, Tennessee and Nashville. Yeah, we'll see how much uh, Julio has left in the tank. He's already played 10 seasons. He's 32 years old. He had a strained quadricep that he couldn't get over last season, actually ended up missing seven games. I think it can help the Titans. They won't have to rely on him because they have a good running game, one of the best in the league with Derrick Henry. I think he, he was a leading rusher in the league this past season. So Julio won't have to be the guy in Tennessee, which is exactly where he needs to be at his age. And of course, with his injury problems, I think it's a big pickup uh, or good pickup for Tennessee. And I think it's a good signing for Julio Jones. We'll see what the uh, Titans can put together, but the pressure won't be on him. He, he won't have to be the guy because of the way the Titans can run the football. Well, you know what? And by the way, the other receiver, 
Tennessee already had a great receiver. I think he wore the number 11, and that was A.J. Brown. Is that correct? Yeah, I think you're right. Now, Tennessee lost a couple of guys, which has, you know, piqued their interest in Julio, a couple of receivers that had piqued their interest in Julio Jones. And so that's part of why they decided to go and get him. Julio had already said he wasn't going back to be a Falcon anymore. He was done there. And like I said, again, we'll see how much he has left in the tank. I think he's a good addition, uh, but what he won't, I don't think, will be called upon to make, to be the guy in Tennessee because Tannehill has a quarterback position that's serviceable, but he's not a great quarterback. So I think they just brought him in as another piece because they like to run the ball. Now, now Dre, I, I, if, if you're uh, Derek Henry, you got to say, okay, good. I got somebody to take the pressure off me because I got two receivers now and I got a decent quarterback. So what do you think about that move? Oh, yeah, good move for them. They also got an ex-Rams receiver on the team. And they got three pretty good receivers. Not pretty good, really good. Julio Jones, A.J. Brown, like you mentioned. And uh, so now the receiving core is straight, and that'll help out uh, Derrick Henry in their running game. And Tennessee's a solid team. They got a good D. You just wonder, you hope, rather, you hope Julio stays healthy because he's been really injury prone the last couple of years, missed a lot of games. He counts a lot against their cap this year, uh, about 14, 15 million. And then he's 32 years old. So you just hope he stays healthy and can give him something on the field because when he's healthy, if he still got, hadn't lost a step, he's a heck of a receiver. My report says the losers of this deal are the Atlanta Falcons. Number one, the quarterback, Matt Ryan, is going to miss Julio Jones because when he gets in trouble, he could always get the ball to Jones during that time period. So now he's going to have to look at other targets like Ridley and Pitts and Gage. And then you know who the head coach now is of Atlanta. His name is Arthur Smith. So, you know, He's going to be uh, Arthur Smith. A R T A U R Smith. <laughs> He's like, y'all want me to take this thing and try to do something with it? And y'all took my main player. And then also, yeah. if you look at it, the Indianapolis Colts, they were looking and locking in the AFC South because they had Jacksonville in the division. They just started a new team. And then with the Houston Texans, you would expect the Colts being there because they went and got Carson Wentz as their quarterback. So now uh, the Titans are going to be a team to look out for in the AFC South Division. Well, no doubt. And then the Atlanta Falcons, jumping back to them, they're going to throw all those balls that they used to throw to Julio Jones. They want to throw those balls to that rookie all-world tight end coming in from Florida, Kyle Pitts. So they want to yeah. throw him those passes. So they're rebuilding. It's funny. They're rebuilding in a sly way that they still got an older quarterback who I like Ryan. Real I old, think he yeah. can chunk it, but he's older. What is he? 37, 38. He's up there. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but they haven't figured out probably how to move, move away from him yet, but they're probably going to be a team caught in the middle this year. I don't see him being a great team or anything, but uh, it's kind of, kind of awkward to have a veteran quarterback and bringing in the younger guys around him. Yeah. Now I got a word that, you know, Shanahan, who's with the 49ers, but he used to be in Atlanta and he really wanted Julio, but the deal came down about, you know, what they were going to give up for it. Like a, a second and fourth round pick uh, to the 49ers would have been aggressive, but uh, you know, during that time period, they just weren't able to come up with it. So uh, yeah. the 49ers, they just going to miss out on that. We'll see. But I, I just got to say, Hey, uh, for Tennessee, for Derrick Henry, who's to me, who's been, been a running back for several years, is still able to make an impact in this game because usually running backs are good for what three or four years, and then after right. that, they're they're not worth anything. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, he's in mm -hmm. that window, but Derrick Henry can run the football. And that's what they hang their heads. That's what they that's what they want to do. They want to pound the football, play defense, and that's right. you know in the past been a recipe for uh, for success. But we'll see how uh, Julio fits into that. Yeah. Hey, by the way, they said that uh Brett uh, Brett Favre. I mean, I'm sorry, not Brett Favre, but Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers is really calling the shots in the NFL. He's really getting away what he wants to do with. Well, apparently your mini camps are supposed to be kicking up this week. He's not going to be at mini camp. Now they have to find a way to get somehow cheap Aaron Rodgers. That would be a disaster if they, you know, let him go. But right now, Aaron is not planning on being at mini camps. I don't know how this story ends. Again, that guy's fickle, uh, but we'll see what happens. We'll have to keep following this story. But from day to day, you just never know. Yeah. My prediction is they'll give him a ton of money in the summer and he'll show up for training camp maybe a yeah. week before the season starts or something like that. And there you go. He'll get a ton of money and play one more year there. Yeah. Gotcha. 
Well, listen, uh, we're going to shift gears to talk college football. Of course, uh, Kevin and I plan on making it to uh, AT&T Stadium for, of course, the Big 12 Media Day. And I don't know if y'all heard about it or not, but that doggone Nick Saban just got additional three years on his contract, and he signed to 2028. How does he do it, Kevin? Just three years? They should have signed it to a lifetime contract the way every year they compete for a, a national championship and they will again this season. He's the best coach in the NCAAs he's been for quite a while. So, yeah, they're going to eat. That's an easy call to lock him up. He's the best coach and has been for a while. And they're always competing for a national championship. So expect Alabama to be right back there. You got to find just like Green Bay has to find a way to keep Aaron Rodgers. They had to find they were going to keep the coach down there at Alabama. Well. Wow. They already got a four-star recruit running back coming. His name is Le'Veon Moss, who is out of Baton Rouge. He is one of the top, and he's made a commitment now to go to Bama. So they're getting them signed and coming in there, man. It's just amazing how they're you know, I'm sure Saban has to turn people away. They don't have to do a whole lot of recruiting because the NFL stays on that campus. You know, They're always looking at that program first. So if you want a shot at the NFL and you got a chance to go to Alabama, you go to Alabama. And so, yeah, that, that's no, that every year they're going to compete for a championship, and a lot of times they win it. Yep, definitely on that situation. So, so Kev, uh, anything, Kevin, else you want to add on that for the uh, Big 12 media oh, days? Who you got? Oklahoma coming out again? Man, I, do, we, do we pick Oklahoma every year we, coming out of the Big no 12? Choice. They got Spencer <laughs> Rattler coming back. You yeah, know, Rattler's going to be pretty good now. He's going to be an approved quarterback, so I expect them to have a big season. Probably be the player of the year coming out of the Big 12. But again, every year, as I do every season, and rarely do they prove me wrong, I pick Oklahoma to come out of the Big 12. The question is, who's going to get second? Is it going to be Texas? No. Will it be Baylor, you know? No, it won't be Baylor. Baylor's struggling because they got a new coach, a whole new system. I, I think the same thing is kind of true uh, for Texas, new quarterback, new coach. I don't think uh, – I don't think this year is, is, is the year for the University of Texas. Oklahoma State is always competitive, but they lose in the big games. I think you got to stick with Oklahoma. Who's second coming out? Who knows in the Big 12 at this point? It was such an up and down season last year in the Big 12, and you never knew from one week to the next. You know, everybody lost a big game, but I think you got to start with Oklahoma. Look at Oklahoma State. I, I don't think Baylor's going to be very good. Uh, Texas is going to be competitive, but I don't think they're going to make a true push for it. Uh, who knows about, you know, some of the other teams in the Big 12, West Virginia, you never know what you're going to get. But, yeah, the head's on. Eyes on favorite, you got to go with the Sooners. Yeah, and we're definitely Clemson, Ohio State, Oklahoma, and Alabama are yeah. predicted to be your top uh, four teams that's coming up. Now, when I was looking at my notes for the Big 12, for the Pac-12, they're saying it's going to be between USC and Oregon as the top two in that. So, you know, is it time to get – because Pac-12, they waited so late last year during COVID to come back and play football. So, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, and I said, I said this last – sorry, Dre, I'm going to jump in. I said this last season, the Pac-12 should have sat out the whole season, the way that <laughs> that's the way that season ended up. They should have sat out the whole season. I don't – I'm not a believer. I'm a huge USC fan. You're both North since 1974. I'm not buying it until I see them win some big games, until Clay Hilton is out of there. I'm not. I I I gotta. I'll have to see it to believe it. Well, Dre, I'm a ventriloquist, and Kevin just said exactly what I was gonna say. I was gonna say Kevin Simon hates that coach, and I'm co-signing yeah. with him. He said mm -hmm. until Clay Helton's out, but I think USC is gonna be much improved. They got some athletes. They're they're getting some blue chippers again finally. So they've done a pretty good job recruiting, but it remains to be seen how good they'll be in the long run um, because of the coaching situation. So let's see. Mm -hmm. Definitely on that situation, they, they're going with surprises as Utah is a possibility for the uh, the Pac-12. And you know who I like watching playing football out there is I like Arizona State because I like to see Herm Edwards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I love Herm Edwards, man. man. And they, they <laughs> stepped, you know, they had a decent season, but they lost a big game. And so that's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. The Pac-12 could have set the whole season out because the way that season ended, nobody ended up playing worth a dog on. But, yeah, I, I, I root for Herm and – you know, of mm -hmm. course, I root for my beloved, my beloved Trojans, but we'll see. We'll see how this uh, this full season goes. Hopefully, yeah. You know, <laughs> we, we had those. One thing about being here in Texas, uh, the Avocare, uh season opener, man, they would bring the Pac-12 here right. every year. You know, we would get a chance to see them here, and Alabama come here or LSU. So it was just great watching them or Ohio State come here to Texas. 
to play in some of these games here at yeah. uh, Jerry Stadium, you know. Mm-hmm. They usually have the biggest game to, to kick off the season a couple of years ago. Again, going back to USC, Alabama beat USC 52-3. to three. Come on, man. <laughs> really? I had on my UC, USC gear at the mall. I had to sneak out the back door. <laughs> you know, <laughs> quietly tip out of there with my USC gear on, you know, come on. <laughs> All right. Well, we got two minutes and something left, and I'm going to go ahead and go with you first, Kevin, and then Dre, as uh, we just got through watching Brooklyn beat down. I say, yeah, yeah. It, they the, destroyed the Milwaukee yeah. Bucks. Oh. Yeah, Milwaukee's having a tough time shooting the three. They didn't hang their hats on the three, but they were one of the better three point shooting teams uh, throughout the regular season. They're struggling here in the uh, in the playoffs shooting the three, but they, what a blowout! I'll just to remind you real quick that we're still in a pandemic. John Rom. John Rahm, the golfer who was uh, leading by six strokes in the Memorial over the weekend. He was about to win that tournament after three days. After the third day, he's up six strokes, and they tell him he tested positive for COVID. Yes, I heard that. Yeah, tested positive for COVID, could not finish uh, the, the tournament. He lost. He was about to win. It's not a given, but he was up six strokes going into the final day. He was about to win $1.6 million, and because of COVID, he gets Nada. So we are still in a pandemic. That's just a reminder that we're still in a pandemic. Yeah, because we went, went over the 600,000 that have lost yeah. lives. So just, right. just need to remember that. Dre, you're 60 seconds. You're up, bud. Well, I'm going to get a little deep on you guys, man. But the NFL has promised to put an end to that controversial practice called race norming. And we talked about mm-hmm. that uh, last year, I guess it was which assumed black players started out with a lower level of cognitive function and therefore it made it harder for those guys to get settlements that were pl- claiming uh, when they played, they had concussions or they had developed dementia from those days and those head injuries. So Harry Edwards, who's the famed sociologist and uh, he works for the San Francisco 49ers came out and said, it was just horrible. What had been going on is his, his exact quote was "It's ridiculous. It's asinine. It's almost comedic that it would get this far. But he's glad that the NFL is finally uh, saying they're going to put an end to that and that you can't have 74 percent of the NFL players be black when it comes to actually being able to claim access to funds resulting from brain damages, dementia, CTE, et cetera, that all of a sudden there's a different standard for them. So I'm glad to see that the NFL is putting a halt to that. And hopefully all these guys that have been putting in claims, they said they're going to go back and, and basically all uh, um you know, go back and, and go back through all the current the cases that were turned down and review them all, man, and audit them. And then even as for, um, uh, you know, money, uh, they can get damages uh, going back for, for those that were turned down because they were because of the color of their skin. So uh, I just yeah. say kudos to that. And let's see. Let's see what happens. And yet I'll just say this. And yet the powers that be want us to believe that there is no systemic racism. That's a right. perfect example of exactly. systemic racism, okay? At every turn, we fight an uphill battle. You're exactly right. I totally agree. All right, fellas, I want to say thank you so much for just being here, talking sports, and right here on the Big Game Christian Sports Network, my time is up. It's Kevin Simon, and of course, uh, the one and only Andre Russell in the house. Remember, the Clippers and the Nets <laughs> is what we're going with, at least I am. No, uh, I'm Phoenix Suns. I'm still Phoenix Suns now. Okay. You're all Phoenix. The I picked Phoenix to win the West. I'm staying with them. Okay. Uh-huh. And who you got in the yeah. East? In the East? Um, uh, Dre, you got to come around. It's time to come around to Brooklyn now. You've been fighting. <laughs> man, I'm not. I refuse to say Brooklyn. I'm, come around. I'm come around. Upset. I don't know, man, now, because I was going to get the Bucks a shot. They're embarrassing. Philly, I'm gonna say Philly, even though I think the oh, Hawks going to might get, <laughs> win that series. Oh, no. I'm out. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Me, me and Lucy Pearl for... got a date. Me and Lucy Pearl got a date. <laughs> See y'all later. Bye. <laughs>